Hi, welcome to Talk Back Live, a show that gets you involved in live conversation and sports with Brian Camp on Sports Update, bringing you the latest developments in today's world of sports. And now here's your host, Frank Allen. Hi there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and a pleasant night to each and every one of you in your different time zones around the world and across the country. Here we are. It's Thursday. It's it's uh, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. It's uh, Friday morning in London at 1 a.m. and it's uh, 9 a.m. in Tokyo, Japan. Hi, everybody. My name is Frank Allen, and welcome to another edition of Talk Back Live. It's a program we come on each week, every Thursday at this time, and we bring everybody in to enjoy the program with us. You could be part of the program where every Thursday we engage you in conversations and it's free exchange. And all of you who are here for the very first time, we're here, whatever your time zone is, whatever time that you saw this show come on, that's the time we come on because you're in different time zones, right? But here we're on the East Coast coming to you live from New York City. But, but those of you who have been with us for the entire time and been with us from the beginning, you already know the protocol. Now, we get you involved in conversation in this way. All you have to do is type in right there. Use your keypad, your keyboard. Type in and we will see you right there. I will see you right there on the big screen. I will entertain all of your thoughts and ideas. And of course, we'll entertain all of those. You have any questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, or if you just want to say hello, that's okay, too. We invite that, too. Just say hello. But uh, if you don't want to indulge in conversations, which a lot of people don't, they want to sit idle and watch the show, all right? But we hope that you can stay with us for the full hour. And if you can't, whatever time you could spare, we would really appreciate it. Now, a lot of you, as I said, are different time zones. Some people are working. Some people are on their way home. Some people are getting up. Some people are off to work. The old different routines, right? different times, but we're glad you're here with us. Now, uh, later on in the program, we're going to do the usual thing, right? We have a usual thing going on. Later on in the program, not too far away, minutes from now, Brian Camp will be here coming to you from uh, over there in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we link up with him. You'll get a chance to meet him. He'll be here with us with the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update. I'm pretty sure there's a lot to talk about. And uh, we're going to dis discuss all of that with you. And later on, also in the program, we have uh, this day in history. So we have all of the events that we'll be talking about on this day in history. And then later on in the program, too, we are going to give you that information of all of those great movies that you love so much from Turner Classic Movies. We want to add to your um, busy schedule. All right. And I know you have a busy schedule, but you want, might want to catch up on some movies over the weekend. And I have some that I want to add to your bucket list of what to watch. So all of that is coming up and it's all of us together. And we're so glad to have you along with us. So here we are. Summer is almost over. It's a short week, right? A short week. And we're off to another weekend. Uh, we had, and I hope you enjoyed the Labor Day holiday weekend for whatever you did. I hope you did it on the safe side. And uh, so it's all over and we're back to square one. Now, after the weekend is over, of course, we're back to a full week, of course. So we had a long weekend and now we have a short week. And I hope that uh, this upcoming weekend will be a good one for you, weather-wise and otherwise. And uh, let's see, we've got, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, we got sports coming up. That's coming up in a few minutes and a whole lot of things coming in. So I wanna say hi to all of you guys who are watching us on uh, Facebook, because we're coming on three different places. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we're on Instagram. Now, those of you who are watching us on Facebook right now, please get your friends involved. You know how you can do that? You can tag this show directly to them, and they'll see that when they pop up. If they're on the uh, online right now, they'll see the pop-up, and all they have to do is press it, and they'll come right here. They'll see you. They can talk to you. They can talk to me and talk, talk to anyone else who comes in. And those of you who are watching us on YouTube, we invite you to click on to our YouTube channel. Go to the YouTube channel and subscribe to us. Because when you subscribe to us, that means that every time we come on live or we uh, put on a video or something or something to that nature uh, to keep you busy, that will pop up. And that will give you that uh, information. There's the uh, information that what they call a uh, notification, right? And that'll pop up. And for the rest of you who are watching us on Instagram, we thank you so much for being along. All you have to do is just follow us each week. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being along with us. Oh, we're going to tighten up the show today. Uh, we got a lot of things uh, to talk about. You know, um, the big news, and you already heard it, it's dominating the news in the news department, all, all over the news boroughs. It's a big domination. You heard about it. And that's one of the things I want to talk about right now. You already heard about our queen, queen from England, uh, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth the second passed away as you already know she passed away today and for those of you who are watching us in the uk that would be yesterday because you're in a to a new um, uh day okay so it's after one o'clock where you are right now now she passed away uh on the 8th of september the 8th of september on a thursday on this thursday and um it shocked the world and some people it didn't shock because they kind of knew it was coming. Now I woke up this morning. When I woke up this morning, I came on with the news. I found out on the news when I woke up this morning that um, over in England, her doctors said that they wanted to uh, look closely at her. They want to keep monitoring her because they were really concerned about her health. And that was kind of a a, a language that doesn't really come out of the UK like that uh, for the Queen unless they actually knew something. So I don't know, they probably knew something. So they just broadcast that much so they could tell us. And then uh, early today, I went out uh, for some coffee, went out, take a break, take a long, you know, couple of hours. And um, when I got back, when I got back, I found out through my telephone because they, uh, um, a new, the, the news item came up. You know, when you get those pop-ups, they, they, what they call the, um, the the breaking news alerts, right? They came up on my telephone, and that's how I found out, just like the rest of the world. And it was all over the news after. It's still on the news. It's, it's no matter what news channel you turn to, that's the top story. And it's going to be around with us for a while. Uh, they, she's going to be buried within a 10-day span, 10 days. And... Believe me, they're going to be broadcasting that too, and uh, it's it's going to be around for a while. So yeah, she passed away. She was ninety six years old. Now I only the she spent seventy seventy years on the throne. Seventy years she held the longest position, and that position she was the longest holder of that position. Seventy years as queen. So now the throne goes to. Um, uh, who's no longer Prince Charles. Now he's King Charles III. King Charles III is taking over. And um, and I'm pretty sure, I, I, I can't imagine, I can understand, but I can't imagine you know, how he actually feels uh, because you never, everyone mourns differently. Everybody has different feelings when they lose a loved one. But uh, I pray for the family that they, um, for their strength, at least in this big time, because this is a world, this is global. This is global, this news is global. And uh, I'm still trying to process it now. But uh, yeah, she passed away. And she passed away in the afternoon. Now, we're here, we're coming to you Eastern time, all right? We're coming to you Eastern time. So when the news broke here on the East Coast, it was somewhere around, I believe, somewhere around seven o'clock in the morning. That's when the news broke around seven o'clock in the morning. And so uh, it's early. So seven o'clock in the morning and um, it's about 11 o'clock in London at that particular time. Yes, yeah, about 11 o'clock in London at that particular time. Now she passed away in the afternoon. I can't pinpoint the exact time she passed away in the afternoon on London time. So it was still morning here on the East Coast when the news broke, when she passed away. Um, it's, it's news that the sad news, people are still mourning, it's all over social media and uh, it's all over all of news boroughs, it's all over. And um, so uh, just be prepared to know that this news is gonna linger for a long time because they're gonna be following every detail from this time forward, right through her funeral. And um, so that's that's happening. Now she passed away in Scotland. 
you know, because she has, oh, they have an estate in Scotland and that's where she passed away. And um, so there you have it, there you have it. And she just, by the way, sworn in uh, the new prime minister of, uh, you know, that, that proceeded or that took over the uh, position from Boris Johnson. Uh, that's Liz uh, Tess. Liz Tess is now the new prime minister. And she just, just I think about last week or so, just uh, uh, crowned her position. And so she was, she was I, I saw the images on TV this morning, the very last image that she had, she was walking, she had her cane. And you could see, if you look at that image pretty closely, you could see her hand was blue. So we, they knew something was wrong. But uh, prior to all of that, she was in good spirits until this. So uh, I just want to say uh, to the family, uh, uh, my, 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 my heartfelt condolences out to you and, and yours. And because all of the people uh, who actually didn't live in, in England or was someplace else, when they found out the news, they just came rushing. And so... Uh, you have to stay tuned, stay tuned to the news and find out more as you go along all, all night long, all day tomorrow and the next day, uh, new developments will come along. So there you have it. Anyway, if you're just joining us in just about uh, five minutes now, four minutes from now, uh, Brian Kent will be here with the latest developments in today's world of sports. Congratulations to former President Barack Obama uh, for winning an Emmy Award last week or that's last weekend, at the Creative Arts Ceremony for narrating uh, the Netflix doc documentary, uh, Our Great National Parks. And um, this is, by the way, the third um, uh, Emmy that Barack Obama received. He received two from his prior memoirs, and this one too, so it's three. So we got a president, a uh, former president that, uh, that's, you know, when he left office, he moved on. He moved on like, like a president should when, they, when they're out of office, everything is done. They did what they can do and he moved on and he got that, he got Emmys. Boy, I'm pretty sure some people like really peed about that, him winning an Emmy. I don't know, I'm happy for him personally, you know. So congratulations, Barack Obama, and for that achievement. And there are more of uh, achievements to come for Barack Obama and for all of us as well. So uh, it's now uh, coming up to 13 minutes past the hour. And the name of the show is called Talk Back Live. And my name is Frank Allen. And uh, we're going to be here for the uh, rest of the show up until the top of the hour again. Those of you who are watching us, we're coming to you from three places. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we're on Instagram. Please, if you're watching us on uh, Facebook right now, live, that's where we are live right now, please tag your friends. And they'll get the message and they'll come along too. And don't forget, for all of you who are watching us on YouTube, don't forget to go to our YouTube channel and take care of that, right? Subscribe to us. And we really appreciate that. So hi, everybody. Uh, I see people who are coming in on Facebook. Some are sitting idle. Some are actually, um, they like to sit idle and that's okay too. So they're sitting idle just to watch the show. And um, for those of you who would like to say something, we don't mind, we're here for you. Uh, we don't mind, we'd love to hear from you. we really love to hear from you. Uh, even if it's just to say hi. Uh, so we're here for you. We're here for you. Okay. Um, so that that's that's the story in the news. That's what we have in the news today. All right. And um, there's just so many things. There's always one thing after another. And usually, and as much as I hate to say this, but we do always show the coffee hour. We always get information. Some kind of news is always when we go off the air, uh, something happens. Um, but this happened today, and it happened to the day where just in time where we can actually announce it fresh for you. And um, a lot of people uh, went over to uh, Buckingham Palace, and they were dropping flowers and all kinds of things on the ground there. 
when they announced that the crowds, the crowds were massive. You should have seen the crowds. I was watching it. Now, like I said, it's it's nighttime. It's it's morning. It's a new day over there. They're after one o'clock in the morning in the UK. But people were out there and it, it was a massive crowd. It was a massive crowd. And um, when you get things that are royalty, things like that, that are royalty, believe me, it makes the news and it stays with the news for a long, long time. I'm gonna talk more about that a little later on. And of course, we'll tell you about all of the movies and all of those other things we were talking about. But right now, we're gonna go over to Charlotte, North Carolina because Brian Camp is here with us and has the latest developments in today's world of sports. There you go, Brian, there he is, front and center. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Good evening to you and everybody that's watching on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, it's been a bizarre day. Day was going great until, you know, you get those um, news flashes on, on your telephone, your cell, cell, cell phone breaking news and um, just like what you saw, I saw too, it was doctors are saying to the family to monitor the health of Queen Elizabeth. And um, okay, and, you know, I mean, we should not be surprised that she's gone, okay? 96 years old. And, um, you know, that's, that's a long life, you know? That's a long life. Um, um, what What's so great about uh, Queen Elizabeth? She was a great leader because two days before she died, she was still working, working hard. She was she just installed a new prime minister that, as though you just mentioned, I thought it was two days ago. You might be right. It was last last week, but it tells it, it shows that she was putting her her house in order. She's putting the country before herself and before everything else. She wanted to put people in the right places. And that's why she put this new prime minister because she felt that she would, that she would by put her in, you know, she would just put her in a position where she could help lead London, England. And, and um, you got to commend the queen. Um, as you know, the story, she did not, did she, she walked into this, position as queen right she didn't want it. she didn't want it she didn't, she didn't want it because yeah. because it was her her her, her father yeah. her uncle her brother her father's brother who was the king but he fell in love with a woman who was yeah. a orsi from the united states yeah. so he gave up his throne and the next person who was in line was queen elizabeth's father and from then on, the rest is history. He had two daughters, and you know, um, if you ever get a chance to watch the Netflix the, the, uh, series called The Crown, it explains on how everything works, of how the ranking um, individuals are and everything. And um, you know, you gotta you gotta tell you gotta say it, but the uncle gave up his royalty just to be with the woman that he loved, the woman of, of, of his love life, you know? And he chose to be with, with her. He didn't care about royalty. He didn't care about being king. So he gave it to his brother, you know, or, or they just gave it to his brother, and which was a Queen's Elizabeth's father. But, you know, she puts things before herself and for the country. So our prayers is with the queen. May she rest in peace. 70 years, 70 years on that throne. She got crowned in 1953. Yeah, that's the longest of any yeah. uh, monarch um, in history of the modern day world. 70 years, that's a long time. And um, she, she was born in 26 and 1926, she passed away today. And, um, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be some funeral. But um, good evening to you and everybody else again. Um, it is 76 degrees here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it's clear. And um, great news. Football is officially back tonight. Woo. Can we get a little clap? Football is back tonight. Opening night is on Thursday night. Uh, it's the Buffalo Bills are playing the Super Bowl champions. L.A. Rams. 
So you kick the sort of football season is over with. I mean, it's, it's going to start now with tennis. Serena Williams, as you know, got ousted last week, last Friday. She's no longer um, in playing um, te uh, tennis anymore. She announced her retirement and um, wish her the best. She's some people say she's the greatest of all time. I think she is, but there's few that argue, and I understand why they will argue, and they, for good reasons too. Because, um, for example, Serena didn't play in the toughest comp competition in her era. She only had her sister to to, uh, to uh, contend with, but she is the goat as far as I'm con concerned. But this day in sport, this, but this day in sports, September eighth, eighteen ninety four. Employed by Thomas Edison, William K. L. Dixon, film's first boxing match at West Orange, New Jersey. Yes, the inventor, Thomas Edison. 1939, Indians, Cleveland Indians, Bob Filler is the youngest pitcher to win 20 games. 1939, the New York Yankees defeated the Boston Red Sox 4-1 to in seven innings, called because of lightning. When there's lightning on the field, whether it's baseball or football, it stops. It no, no, no. You cannot play in no lightning. Lightning can strike a human being and it could kill you. 1954, with a 3-2 count, Philadelphia Phillies Phil, Phil, Ashburn, uh, Ashburn fouls the next 14 pitches and then he walks. That was a long at bat. You foul off 14 consecutive pitches and then and then you walk. 1958, Pittsburgh Pirates Roberto Clemente ties a modern day record of three triples in a game. 1963, Milwaukee Braves Hall of Fame pitcher Warren Spahn ties Christy Matheson with 13 20 win seasons. That's amazing. 13 20 game seasons that wins that he won in 13 se seasons. That's unbelievable. 1965, Kansas City A's Burt Campy Campanaris plays all nine positions in a game. 1972, Chicago White Sox, excuse me, Chicago Cubs, Ferguson Jenkins wins his 20th game for the sixth straight year. 1973, Hank Aaron sets a record for most home runs in one league, 709. He'd been playing with the National League for all these years, but then the Brewers went over to the American League. That's when Hank Aaron became a DH, a designated hitter. 1980, Bowie Coon, the commissioner at that time, suspends Ferguson Jenkins indefinitely due to a drug arrest. 1985, Pete Rose ties Ty Cobb with 4,191 hits. 1988, National League President A. Bartlett Giamonti is unanimously elected the Major League Baseball seventh commissioner, the seventh one. 1993, Major League Baseball proposed switch to a three division format okayed in the American League. In 2001, we're just talking about this athlete, US women's tennis Venus Williams defeated her youngest sister Serena Williams. 6 2, 6 4 was the score. Birthdays, 1946, L.C. Greenwood, NFL lineman, born in Canton, Mississippi, 1956. Maurice Cheeks, NBA guard, born in Chicago, Illinois. And in 1971, Greg Miner, NBA guard, born in Sanderville, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, that is sports on a busy day, yeah. in sports and out of sports. Yeah. A sad day, too. Uh, but a little good news on my part, the Yankees are in the lead right now. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. They just tied up. Oh. <laughs> they tied up. Two, two. Like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I still have, I still have high hopes for the Yankees and the Mets. Still have high hopes. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I'll talk about the clock. That's struggling. The yeah, Yankees. Uh, they're coming out of their little funk right now. We both, but, uh, both are struggling. Yeah, yeah. They're struggling together, but I just hope that they, you know. Hey, right, listen, I'm not giving up hope. October's around the corner, but I'm not going to give up hope. We'll see what happens. Uh, uh, put the whammy out there. Yes, yes, yes. They're going to win. The Yankees are going to win. The Mets are going to win. 
and they're going to go into the World Series together, and the Yankees are going to sweep them. That's just wishful thinking, okay, as a Yankee. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Anyway, um, I guess we'll catch you back here in the morning, bright and early. 10.05. You got it. We'll put you on a little earlier because you have things to do. You're a busy man. Yes. And, uh, we'll, we look forward to seeing you then. See you then. Take care. Take care of yourself. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was Brian Camp with the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update. And he's here every Thursday at this time with the latest developments. And of course, he will bring you all of the information each week. As he already said, football is on the upswing pretty soon. Uh, we're getting ready to see uh, what's going to happen with baseball, who's going to enter the World Series. The Yankees are struggling, the Mets are struggling, and those are the two teams I'm hoping to get into the World Series because I want to see them come back to New York. And uh, you know, it would be good for New York because uh, financially, too, it would be great for New York for them to come in. But a lot of things. And uh, of course, we are experiencing this sad day today, as we already told you. Uh, and if you haven't heard by now, then your head was in the sand. Uh, Queen Elizabeth passed away today at the age of 96 years old. You know, this day, it's, it's, it's going to be one of those days that I'm never going to forget, September 8th, because I have a nephew uh, that's celebrating a birthday today. And that will also remind me of Queen Elizabeth. So there's a day right there I'll never forget. You know, it's just like when those, those historical days come around and you never forget them, you kind of know them just by heart. If anyone ever asks you years and years later, what year and what day did Queen Elizabeth die? And you could simply say she died September 8th, 2022, you know? Days you can remember, let's say uh, December 7th. Anybody remember what happened September 7th? Of course you do. September 1941, that was the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Everybody remembers that. Who remembers January 6th? Everybody remembers January 6th. I mean, they're still talking about January 6th, as opposed to not talking about Pearl Harbor. That happened those many years ago. Remember January 6th? It's just like remembering your birthday. Some people don't even want to remember their birthdays, you know, especially as they get older. They don't want to remember. But you remember those historical days that happens. It's just like you remember Thanksgiving Day and Christmas Day. It's just that those kinds of days you remember. So you get these new days that come around. This is a new day, September 8th. It's going to go down in history. September 11th goes down in history. By the way, that's coming up. And I'm pretty sure that's going to, you know, all of this is too close to me, all right? You got the queen gone and, Jan and September 11th is coming around. You know, that's a lot to, to, uh, this, to uh, digest right now. You know, that's a lot to digest. And the 11th is on what? On what day? Sunday? Sunday. 11th is on a Sunday. This coming Sunday. And um, it's, it's, it's just too much. So you have all of those days you remember. You remember September 8th, and you're going to remember September 11th, and you're going to remember December 7th, and you're going to remember January 6th. If, if you're just joining us, the name of the show is called Talk Back Live. My name is Frank Allen, and uh, we're here to the top of the hour. So let's get started right away. Let's move on a little bit. Okay, let's talk about this day in history, because on this day in history, in 1915, Association of Negro Life and History was founded in the U.S. It's now called the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. On this day in history, in 1916, U.S. President Woodrow Wilson signs the Emergency Revenue Act, doubling the rate of income tax and adding the inheritance and munitions profit tax. On this day in history, in 1920, U.S. Airmail Service 
uh, begins in New York City and San Francisco, California. On this day in history in 1921, the first Miss America crown in Atlantic City, and she was called, her name was Margaret Gorman. She was 16 years old. That happened in uh, Washington, D.C. On this day in history in 1930, New York City public schools began teaching Hebrew. On this day in, in history in 1939, Frank Franklin D. Roosevelt declares limit nation a national emergency due to war in Europe. On this day in history in 1943, Italy surrenders to allies in World War II. On this day in history in 1951, Japan signs peace treaty with 48 countries. On this day in history in 1952, Ernest Hemingway's, uh, Ernest Hemingway's novel, The, the uh, Sea, The Old Man and the Sea was published. That turned into a movie too. I believe Spencer Tracy was in that, I believe. On this day in history in 1954, radio disc jockey Alan Freed leaves Cleveland, Ohio to come to New York to work at WINS Radio. On this day in history in 1956, Harry Belafonte's album Calypso goes number one and stays number one for 31 weeks. On this day in history in 1957, singer Jackie Wilson releases his first solo single, Repetit. And by the way, that was one of the uh, singles that helped launch um, Barry Gordy, Barry Gordy's uh, Hitsville, USA, which later became Motown. You already know that. On this day in history, 1958, Singapore Anchor opens Asian tour in Tokyo. On this day in history, 1960, uh, nationwide release US, of US of uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, starring Anthony Perkins and Janet Lee. On this day in history in 1966, Star Trek premieres on NBC TV starring William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy. <clears throat> Back in 1971, John F. Kennedy Center for Performing Arts opens in Washington, DC. Back in 1974, US President Gerald Ford pardons former President Richard Nixon for all federal crimes. In 1981, British TV comedy only Fools and, Her and Horses, that was created by John Sullivan, and it starred David Jason, Nicholas uh, Lindhurst, and Leonard Pierce, and that premiered on BBC One. Back in 1986, The Oprah Winfrey Show is first broadcast nationally. Back in 1994, the 11th MTV Video Music Awards, uh, uh, Ariel Smith wins, along with uh, newlyweds Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley, who opened the show. In 1997, TV series, Ally McBeal, starring Clarissa Flockhart, that was created by David E. Kelly, premiered on Fox TV in the USA. In 1999, American Beauty, directed by Sam Mendes and starring Kevin Spacey, Annette Benning, and uh, Theo uh, Burke that premiered in uh, Los Angeles, California, and it made the best picture of the year 2000. In 2001, Kylie Minaj, uh, that's Kaylee Minaj, uh, released her single, I Just Can't Get Over, I Just Can't Get, I, I Just Can't Get You Out of My Mind, period. And that was her biggest in her career. In 2015, comedian Stephen Colbert debuts as the new host on the CBS TV show, Late Show. 19, uh, 1914 actress Hilary Brooks of the Abbott and Costello Show was born on this day in Astoria, Queens in New York, and she passed away in 1999. In 1925, actress Denise Darcel was born in Paris, France. She passed away in 2011. Actor and comedian Peter Sellers, was born on this day, 1925, in Fort Smith, England, and he passed away July 24th, 1980, at the age of 54 from a heart attack. Country singer Patsy Klein was born on this day in 1932 in Winchester, Virginia. She died March 5th, 1963, at the age of 30 in a plane crash. U.S. President Bernie Sanders is celebrating a birthday today. He was born in 1941 on this day in New York City, and he's 81 years old today. Happy birthday, Mr. Senator. In 1957, 
actress Heather Thomas, who played Jody on The Fall Guy, was born in Greenwich, Connecticut. She's 65 today. Pop singer Pink was born on this day in 1979. She's celebrating her birthday today. She's 43 years old. She was born in Abington um, Township, Pennsylvania. She's 43. 1953, actress Lana Turner weds her fourth husband, Tarzan of the Apes actor Lex Baker, and they got the boat force in 1957. In 1963, actress, the legendary actress, uh, way back in the day, legendary actress, uh, Geraldine Page weds actor um, Rick Torn in uh, Apeno, Arizona. Okay, 2014, actress Ashley Tisdale weds singer Christopher French at a private ceremony in Santa Barbara, California in 1965. Actress Dorothy Dandridge dies from an accidental overdose at the age of 42. In 1969, Bud Collier, TV MC, host of Beat the Clock, and To Tell the Truth, dies at the age of 61. By the way, Bud Collier was also the voiceover guy for the radio version of Superman. And finally, in 1981, American civil rights activist and longtime Executive Director of the NAACP, Roy Wilkins, dies at the age of 80 years old. So that's this day in history. And those of you who may know something uh, on this day in history, and I didn't mention it here, maybe because I didn't know, or it wasn't given to me like it was supposed to, maybe you can help us out. And uh, we'll add it on. And of course, what we'll do, we'll also uh, convey it to everybody here. Okay, Bernard Shaw, oh, that's right. I was gonna get to that, Brian. Um, Bernard Shaw, remember Bernard Shaw? Bernard Shaw was uh, the anchor, the first black correspondent anchor on CNN. He passed away today at the age of 82. And he was a yeah, former CNN, he was an anchorman on CNN. Also, he worked on ABC TV News Network. Uh, he passed away. He passed away. He was 82 years old. Thanks a lot, Brian, for reminding me about that. Uh, see, all of these things are coming and all of these things happen today. And uh, so, um, and you'll hear more about that too. They'll, they'll repeat all of those things that are coming up. You know, we talked about earlier uh, Barack Obama, right? I'm, I'm really proud of Barack Obama. I don't care what anyone says. I'm really proud of him. He, as I told you earlier in the show, he won that Emmy Award, right? He won that Emmy Award for his uh, documentary, his narration documentary on Netflix. And uh, that happened last weekend. You, all should, you should also know he went back to the White House yesterday. Him and Michelle, him and his wife, his lovely wife, Michelle Obama, went back to the White House. And of course, they had those portraits painted of them, each of them, uh, one for Barack Obama and one for Michelle, which, by the way, these portraits are going to be hanging up in the gallery where all of the past presidents, starting from George Washington, all up, and they're going to be doing that. Now, every president, every president, at least in my lifetime, have done that. They held a ceremony for each president. So when their pictures go up, guess who didn't do it? Guess who didn't do it? Should I make any waves or should I not make any waves? I'll make waves. Uh, think I should make waves? Yeah, I'll make waves. Yeah, I'll make waves. Um, a certain person didn't do it. As Brian usually say, a certain person that used to occupy 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, he never wants to mention his name. So I'll mention his name. I'll mention his name. 345-66. 345-66. Beast Incarnate. 345-66. Beast Incarnate. Now, he didn't do much of anything like to, to uplift any former president. You know, he never did that. And he never had one of those ceremonies where 
the preceding president, which would have been, I believe, I believe it would have been Barack Obama. So Joe Biden picked up the slack. Um, now, the thing is, I thought about this many times, and let's we'll, we'll see what happens with this. And 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 three forty five slash six six six, beast incarnate. Just to be fair with him, he deserves a portrait in that because he was the president. He was the former president. Okay, so the person. Let's say, for instance, if. Um, Joe Biden wins for a second time. Let's say if he wins for the second time, right? Uh, he would, and the being that the guy he is, being that the guy he is, he will hold a ceremony for 345 slash 66 Feast Incarnate. He would do it. I believe he would do it. I believe he would do it. And if he doesn't run, someone else will. If a Democrat gets in there, I believe there'd be, I think they would be um, big enough, man enough or woman enough, whoever's gonna be president, to do that for 345 slash 666 Beast Incarnate and have his portrait and his wife's portrait in line with the other presidents, starting from George Washington on. And to be fair with him, to be fair with him, he, he, he should get that. He really should get that. But he didn't do it for anyone else. But someone is going to have to do it for him. So, uh, and I dare anyone to challenge that. You know, why, why wouldn't he do that? Why wouldn't he? You know, that's, that's what you do. That's what presidents do. When presidents leave office, you know, they make a, the, the, the peaceful transition. They do that. That's what presidents do. George Bush did it. Barack Obama did it. And of course, Joe Biden, when his time is up, he's going to do it. You know, they take the next president, whoever that may be, give them the tour of the White House. You know, let them do that. You know, something... When Barack Obama came into office, when he came into office, I don't know if you know this or not. The uh, let's see, the 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 president, I think he I see he succeeded, he succeeded the uh, what was it? he was receiving George Bush, right? No, he 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 was after George Bush, right? He was after George Bush. George Bush invited him to the White House, gave him the tour, gave him the, the wife the tour, had tea together, the wives had tea. The guys, maybe they had a couple of beers together. I don't know, they, they're just talking and you know they're making the peaceful transition and all. And the daughters, the daughters of George Bush, the daughters of George Bush got together with the daughters of Barack Obama and sat down with them and briefed them and told them what it was like to live in the White House, gave them advice on how to present themselves as first children of the, of the United States. Did all of that, you know? And I guess after, I guess we lost something along the way because after all of that was over, you never seen that again. You never seen that again. Now, I don't know if children of previous presidents, presidents prior to all of that, to, to the, the uh, Obama administration and the George Bush administration. I don't know if they ever did that. But if the Bushes and the Obamas did that, if they did that, that, was, that started something. But, I, and I thought, okay, that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing that they're doing. But uh, Obama, of course, he made his peaceful transition and bought 345-666 Beast Incarnate took him to the tour. His wife, uh, the, the first ladies, the two first ladies, they sat down, they had tea together. Two guys, I don't know what they were talking about. I don't think they were talking about much, you know, because um, let's face it, 345-666 um, Beast Incarnate didn't like it. 
Barack Obama. That's 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 not that's not speculation. You know, everybody knows that factually. That's factual. You know, didn't didn't like him. Didn't like him. And was, he was glad that they moved out, so he can finish doing the job. What job? He finished doing the job. Whatever job that you perceive that job he was doing. And so here comes uh, Joe Biden. He didn't get that. Barack Obama showed up to um, 345 slash 666 Beast Incarnate, his inauguration. He showed up to that. But uh, 345 slash 666 Beast Incarnate didn't show up to Joe Biden's inauguration. Oh, this is fact. Come on, I'm not making this up. Everybody knows that, you know? So, you know, some of us don't learn to uh, follow transition or, or follow tradition, you know? Or even, you know, add something to improve tradition, you know? There always have to be something. There's always a gap somewhere. And when you have a gap somewhere, everything falls like a domino effect. So you can't have a gap, especially in politics. And we got, that's why everything is falling. Like you got this domino effect. Everything is falling down, falling down because one little gap that's supposed to support, uphold, right? And that's what we do. We, look, look at ourselves like uh, a bunch of teeth, right? When you have a tooth missing and you don't replace that tooth, over time, it collapses, right? on one side and then the other side. And so if you have that, if you replace that tooth, it holds firm, it holds firm. On a construction site, a highway, you have those pillars that holds up the highway, holds up the structure, right? Imagine if those pillars or those, those uh, they weren't there to hold them up. Support beams, that's what I'm looking for. That's the word I'm looking for, support beams. We have structures here in New York. We have elevated train stations that have support beams to hold up the L, you know? And that's what, you know, all of us as Americans ought to do, man, is look at ourselves as support beams, you know, hold up each other, elevate each other, hold up, you know? Gets a little heavy, but a lot of us together, if, if one of us fall, then the load gets heavier. And then what happens? I don't have to tell you the rest of that story, right? Not at all. If you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, the name of the show is called Talk Back Live. My name is Frank Allen. And of course, we're here every Thursday at this time. And we get together and we talk about a lot of things. I like talking about this. If there's something that you want to talk about in particular, I just ran my mouth for all of that time. Uh, but if you have something to say or something uh, contrary to what I just said, that would be great. Now, I must say this, that the experience the opinions and the view of this show does not necessarily express the opinion and the view of Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Zoom, or any other broadcast facility that we come on. So whatever you say, we, we, we take responsibility for. And of course, you're gonna be nice about it, right? So, uh, but if there's anything you want to say on, on to contrary to what I just said, fine, I'm, I'm open, I'm open ears, open all the time. Okay, it's now coming up to, uh, it's uh, coming up to what? We're coming up to um, uh, 11 minutes to the hour, 11 minutes to the hour, that's what we're coming up to. And I want to give you those, uh, those movies. Right, those great movies that you talk. We talk about all of those movies that you like so much, and they all come from Turner Classic Movies. Now, those of you who are going to be on the weekend, of course, you're going to be doing a lot of things. You want to you want to savor the moment of summer, right? Because Labor Day just passed. You know, Labor Day just passed, and so now it's the that, and that's the day that's known as the unofficial day or the unofficial last day of summer. There's a lot to look forward to now. We were looking for baseball in October. We're looking for football. We're looking for Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. It's all on the way. 
And uh, we just want to, you want to savor the moment. So savor the moment with good movies. If you don't want to go out, you know, we still have good weather ahead of us. You might want to do some outdoor things. There are more outdoor things to do. You can do that. Uh, but on the other hand, if you rather stay home and catch up on some movies, well, I have a few to add to your bucket list of movies to watch. So let's get started with that right now. Let's start with something that goes back to 1963. It's a mad, 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 mad world. It's a comedy. And I don't want to, you know, mention all because there, there are just too many uh, actors, name actors, just to, to uh, mention. I'll, I'll name a few. I can't name them all. I mean, you have uh, Spencer Tracy, you have Sid Caesar, you have Jimmy Durante, you have uh, 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 Buddy Hackett, that's Jonathan Winters, uh, Milton Burrow, Edie Adams, and it goes on and on. I, I can't mention them all. Anyway, that's a, that, that's a long movie too. You ought to watch that. It's coming up. And you can watch that on Turner Classic Movie this Sunday at 2 a.m. So that would be like on the overnight period. All right. Uh, if you happen to be asleep, you can't stay up that late. You have to be to work uh, the following day and you can't stay up late. DVR it. Watch it at a later time. You can do that to all of the movies. All right. That's a mad, 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 mad world. Sunday, 2 a.m. Eastern. That's Saturday night, Sunday morning. You also have the women, which by the way, the women, it's all about women. It's nothing but women on the cast. Back in 1939 with Joan Crawford and Rosalind Russell, I mentioned this show, this uh, movie before, it was on before, but I think it's worth watching. I saw it before. It's all women. And anyway, that comes on Turner Classic Movies. You could also watch that on Sunday. And that comes on at 6 a.m. Eastern. You still sleep, right? DVR it. Check it out, DVR. That's uh, The Women, 1939, Joan Crawford, Rosalind Russell, and Turner Classic Movies, Sunday at 6 a.m. That's early for Sunday, right? Yeah, you want to get that extra sleep, DVR. And finally, we have On the Town from 1949, starring Gene Kelly and Frank Sinatra. And that's, uh, that's a good comedy, a little music too, um, with uh, Gene Kelly does a little dancing, Frank Sinatra does a little singing, and everybody's happy. And it's about three sailors that comes into town, come into Brooklyn, New York. They come into Brooklyn, New York, in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. That old, that old Brooklyn Navy Yard is still there, but it's not the Brooklyn Navy Yard anymore. The old Brooklyn Navy Yard, they come in there for a 24-hour tour of New York. And they have to complete the town before they get back to the ship at 6 o'clock on Sunday morning. I would assume it's Sunday morning. Anyway, it, it comes on Sunday, by the way, to On the Town, 1949, G. Kelly and Frank Sinatra. And that's on Turner Classic Movie. That's Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. You'll be wide awake. Get the popcorn, the peanuts, and the Cracker Jacks out. All right, you're going to love it. It's a nice comedy. I love it. I'll probably be watching it myself. But those are one of the movies that I have in my archives. Now, you could also go to Turner Classic Movies and scroll through, all right? What you can do is that they have uh, what they call a program guide. And once you go to Turner Classic Movies, you can thumb right through it. And there may be more movies that you may be interested in watching and uh, outside of the weekend as well. Uh, and, but these are my picks. These are my three picks of the week. But go there and check it out. You can also go on Movie On Demand and watch free movies, free movies. Yes, and they have a lot of them. It dates back to the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, so forth and so on. And you can watch those movies for free. They have a lot of movies, a long list of them from A to Z. And you watch those movies. I, I, I'll tell you one thing. What they usually do, the good thing about it is that they keep those movies on for a period of time. And when you go to the movie that you want to watch, they'll show you, it'll, it'll be notated there, that it'll be there for the next three months, or they give you the actual date when it, it will expire. And after it expires, it goes out, they add more. But usually these movies come back. If you're missing, they usually come back in time at some other length of time. So they kind of recycle them all so everybody gets a chance to see them, all right? So that's movie on demand. They're free movies on demand, and you want to watch the movie on demand, uh, the pay-per-view movies, 
This way you don't have to go to the actual movie theater yourself. You can watch it from home. Of course, everything is done in the movies theaters first, and then they come later on, not too far away on cable, and you can watch them and you can pay, you know, pay-per-view. Now, listen, you like the ambiance of a movie theater, so you have to pay the extra money, right? Uh, it's not like it was in the old days when I was coming up. I paid 50 cents to get into the movies. What do you pay today? What? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 bucks, right? Not counting the popcorn, the peanuts, and the Cracker Jacks, all right? And if you're going there alone, that's enough. Now, if you're going on a date, <laughs> save the ducats, save the ducats. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money and you want to wait till it come on pay-per-view, you could pay, what, five, six, seven dollars. And everything else is free after that. The popcorn, the peanuts, and the Cracker Jacks. Well, they're not really free because you got to go out and buy it anyway. But you know what I mean, you get the idea. And you can watch it in the comfort of your own home. It's like you got you have the ringside seat. It's right there. You can watch it all, you know? And there are other things to watch too as you go along. If you like uh, the networks, all the networks have, you like Lifetime movies, well, check out the Lifetime movie channel. And they may have, watch and see what they have available there. And you can watch, you know, it's, it's all there. And if you're a sports buff, you know, you won't get the chance to see your favorite sport, uh, sporting event in real time. You could always watch the following day as it comes on demand. You know, now, I'm not so sure about the baseball games and the football games, but, you know, you get the idea. It's there. And then and then some of the movies that come on, like your soap operas, you like your soap operas, the networks, go to the networks, whatever you miss today. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys who watch soap operas today, you didn't get to see them because of, uh, of the news that uh, developed today. But tomorrow, whatever you miss today, it will be on tomorrow. And you can go right there on demand. Go right on ABC, CBS, or NBC, whatever soap operas they call, like General Hospital. I like watch General Hospital. I love General Hospital. What I miss today, I'm going to go on tomorrow and catch it. Now, I'm not so sure if the soap operas will be on tomorrow. We have to see how it develops tomorrow. You know, but whatever you miss on that day, the following day, it's right there, right there. So you don't have to miss anything. You never have to miss anything. So there you go. You have all of those things and it's all there for you. And I hope that you enjoy it. So let me give you those movies once again. Okay. We've got It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. And that comes on Sunday at 2 a.m. Eastern. And it's a great comedy. I think you'll like it. You get set for that. But that comes on at 2 a.m. Eastern. That's Saturday night, Sunday morning. DVR it if you can't wake up that. Some people have insomnia and they'll they don't mind waking up. You want to you want to catch a have another apple and watch the show, right? That's what you can do. Right? All right. Okay, you also have the women with Joan Crawford and Roslyn Russell at Sunday at 6 a.m. <gasps> Sunday morning, 6 a.m. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's what I need to open. But DVR it, <laughs> you know? DVR it, don't fret. DVR us. That's a good thing about uh, technology today. Couldn't do that a long time ago. You can do it today. Also, finally, On the Town with Gene Kelly and Frank Sinatra. Uh, but you'll be wide awake then. You'll be back from church even. That comes on Sunday at 4.30 p.m. And it's all right there on Turner Classic Movies. I hope that you enjoy these movies. And I will have more for you next week as I do each week. And uh, so there you have it. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to get your shots, especially now, because now you have the, um, the, uh, the shots for, uh, for the flu shots. They're available now in a lot of places. I'm pretty sure they're available completely everywhere you go. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to get mine tomorrow, as a matter of fact, you know. I didn't get it yet, but I'm going to get it tomorrow, right after I get off the air. And speaking of getting off the air, I'm going to get off the air right now, but um, I enjoyed the show very much. I hope you did. I hope you uh, had a good time. You can catch me back here tomorrow, and you can catch us on the coffee hour. We'll be here. Brian Kent will be here with me with the latest developments in today's world of sports on Sports Update, part of the 2020 feature. However, he's going to be on a little earlier as we come on the air. Because, uh, you know, he has duties like everybody else. So, you know, I'm flexible here. Then we have DJ Pete. 
It's part of the 2020 feature, 20 to the hour, and he gives you information on uh, entertainment and reciting all of those birthdays of people of notoriety. You can catch him, and that, that's good. Uh, other than that, I will be back here on next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Brian Kent will be here, too, with sports, sports update, the latest developments in today's world of sports, and we'll all be here together and all of us together in conversation. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, have a great day. A great evening, a great morning, afternoon, evening, and a great good night to each and every one of you. Every one of you. And I will catch you back here tomorrow. Take care. Bye -bye. You've been watching Talk Back Live with your host, Frank Allen. The producer is Al Dale. Technical assistance, Dave Taylor. Research by Sandy Pierce. And I'm your announcer, Donna Stanky. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time on Talk Back Live.